Over the past while, we've been talking about the decline in comic book sales and discussing some factors that could possibly be contributing to this decline. One of the factors that we talked about is the presence of social justice warrior content in comics. Today, we're going to be talking all about social justice warrior content in diversity as a whole in comic books. This is happening right now, coming your way. Stay tuned. Hey to all my esteemed comic book critics, this is Dante D here and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. As mentioned in the intro, today we're going to be talking all about social justice warrior dogma in comic books. I really wanted to do a whole video dedicated to this because in all the videos that we've done over the past few weeks talking about the decline in comic book sales, one thing that the viewers have consistently been focusing on is the presence of social justice warrior content in comic books. And they're really thinking that this is the reason, this is it, this is why comic book sales are at an all time low. Now, personally, I don't think that SJW content is the only thing to blame for the decline in the sales of comic books. There are various factors and if you want to learn a little bit more about those we did some videos on the comic book sales decline in the past weeks check out the channel or the links in the description below to see those videos as well so if you've really been following what has been going on in the comic book industry over the last few years you'll know that one of the hot topics has been the presence of sjw content or leftist content in comic books. And if you don't know what is meant by SJW, it's basically an acronym for social justice warrior. And this is really uh, a derogatory type term to refer to a person who has these kind of like ultra liberal, ultra leftist type ideas. So how does this relate to comic books? Basically an SJW comic is a comic that consistently virtue signals and whose sole purpose appears to be to proliferate leftist and liberal ideas with respect to social justice. SJW comics are unapologetically overt with this agenda and usually feature minority type characters. So who are some of these characters? Well, we have Miles Morales, who is essentially the Latino Spider-Man, Captain Marvel, Lady Thor, Yes, they made Thor into a woman for a bit. Kamala Khan, who is Ms. Marvel. Uh, she's the, the Muslim Ms. Marvel. Riri Williams, AKA Ironheart, who is essentially supposed to be a, a black female version of Iron Man. And Squirrel Girl. Squirrel Girl, seriously, that, that's a superhero? Overall, Marvel is the one that is pushing this type of SJW leftist agenda more. Than DC. Now I have to say, I've actually read a lot of these titles featuring some of these characters and some of them are really well written. They're not, they're not bad at all, but others are just absolutely terrible and really in your face with that leftist type dogma. Some of the characters I know people really, really despise are actually uh, Squirrel Girl and uh, Ironheart, Riri Williams. These two characters, along with a lot of other characters, got completely roasted uh, by fans. They absolutely hated the type of character they were and they hated the stories in which they appeared. Here's an example of some of the stuff that Marvel has been publishing in their comics. As you can see, a lot of this artwork looks like propaganda and it's ultra feminist. A lot of the characters who used to be feminine in the comics are all of a sudden now appear to be a little bit more masculine. This panel here doesn't even try to be subtle. It's this type of material here that has driven many, many fans, longtime fans of Marvel away from the medium altogether or to just switch to buying solely DC books. Now I can't pinpoint exactly when Marvel started going in this direction. I know it was happening quite a bit when I was still reading new comic books and I don't read new comic books anymore. Uh, it's not because of this. I, I can't say that this is why I stopped reading new comics. For me, what was the tipping point was all of the bloody relaunches. I was so upset that they pretty much within the course of two years had relaunched Spider-Man like three times. I can't say that I totally hated this new direction that Marvel was going in because like I said, I picked up some of the books. I bought Miss Marvel number one right off the shelf and I actually thought it was pretty good. I liked Miss Marvel number one and I actually really liked Kamala Khan. 
But again, I only read it for maybe 15, 16 issues or so. And then I stopped because, well, I just stopped buying new comic books altogether. But some fans told me that the book just got progressively worse. I can see why fans have gotten upset with Marvel. As time progressed from like 2015 all the way up to maybe even a few months ago, Marvel has been increasingly more rooted in this agenda despite fan backlash. And this I think is even compounding the anger of fans even more because Marvel's producing content that people don't like to begin with. Well, when fans go back and try to reach out to Marvel and say, hey, listen, we don't really like what you're doing right now. Can you maybe switch things around to make comics even more enjoyable for just regular people? Marvel comes back, gives them a big F you, and just continues doing what they're doing. I really just don't think that's really good business strategy. And for those fans that are reading this type of content and not liking them, does that make them bigots? Actually, I don't think it makes them bigots at all to tell you the truth. I have heard from a lot of viewers and subscribers to this channel who are Latino, who are black, who are Asian, who don't even like this material. They actually say to me a lot of times, I'm actually kind of insulted that Marvel thinks that because I'm black or because I'm Latino that I'm gonna like Miles Morales. And what's funny is a lot of times you have white people that are writing and drawing these types of stories. Not always, but a lot of times this is the case. Now I'm not saying that you shouldn't have diversity and inclusivity in comic books because I think it is important to have it in there, but it's the level at which you're including it in that comic book that is the key factor. And that I think is a perfect segue into the question of the day, which is, is this type of direction necessary? Well, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I rarely answer questions this gray as yes or no. I think my answer would be yes and no. So what exactly do I mean by that? Well, I think that diversity is actually very important. Let's face it, America's a diverse nation. Canada's a diverse nation. Australia's a diverse nation. The UK is diverse. There's just so much diversity in the world. We're in an era of globalization. So I think it's important for Marvel Comics to keep up with the time and include characters from various levels of diversity. I think everybody should be able to have a character that they can identify with on one level or another. But at the same time, I would caution Marvel Comics, and I know they don't care and they're not listening, but still, I would still caution them with respect to the level of the attention that they're paying to diversity in their books. Diversity and obviously other leftist type dogma. I'm personally of the school of thought that classic characters should not be reimagined as characters from diverse ethnic groups. If you want, say, a Latino character or another black character, don't reimagine a classic character who appears to be white as a character from a different minority group. I think that is hugely disrespectful to the creators who have spent so much time on these characters in the past. Diversity and the whole idea of diversity was pretty much non-existent. America was seen as a white nation and yeah, there was a lot of racism back then. So naturally creators pretty much just created white characters. Is that necessarily a bad thing? I mean, they were doing what they could to stay relevant. And if anything, a lot of these creators came from disenfranchised groups. Let's look at all of the early comic book creators. They were either Jewish and the, the Jewish people at the time were highly discriminated against. And a lot of them were Italian. A lot of Italian Americans working in the comic book industry and Italians were pretty much hated back then as well. The point is we cannot hold creators accountable for the ideas that we have in this day and age when they were writing and drawing comics 80 years ago. You can go ahead and call me a bigot if you want. However, I would find that very funny as people in the past have called me a social justice warrior on this channel for some of the progressive ideas that I have shared in some other videos. I think another thing that's really important to consider that a lot of people have not talked about is moderation. I really think that Marvel Comics and heck, the comic book industry as a whole has really lost the ability to practice moderation, especially in the last 30 years or so. Seriously, the comic book industry is either on one extreme or another. So let's go back to the 90s, for example. What did you see in 90s comics? You saw huge muscles, all these really veiny, angry characters with these 
huge guns. All the things that you saw in comics back in the 90s were promoting hyper-masculinity. And I get what the comic book industry was doing. They were capitalizing on what was popular at the time. What was popular at the time? You had all of these like huge blockbuster action movies with like these heavily muscled characters like Stallone and, 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 and Schwarzenegger and, and, and even Van Damme. And I love these movies a lot. To this day, I still watch a lot of them every so often. But I think in comic books, it went a little bit overboard to the point where they became so superficial and they developed this reputation of being really unintelligent. And yes, comics had this reputation of being unintelligent even before then, but I think that stereotype really got solidified with the type of content that was being produced in the 1990s. Now, don't get me wrong, I actually love 90s comics and I've said many times on this channel that I really do like 90s comics and some of my favorite stories come from the 90s, but I think as a whole, the industry went a little bit overboard with, let's say, hyper-masculinity. So now, let's fast forward 30 years later, and what do you see? You're on the other end of the spectrum, and like completely made of 180. You went from hyper-masculinity, toxic masculinity, whatever you want to call it, to like this ultra-feminist agenda, and it's, it's just completely opposite. So what should we take from this? The comic book industry has lost the ability to practice moderation. Marvel was subtle with their diversity in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and they weren't really calling attention to it that often. And heck, if Marvel ever got huge backlash with some new direction that they were taking back then, a lot of times, most of the time, they listened to their fans to try to fix the problem to keep their fans happy. That definitely is not happening nowadays. So ultimately, SJW rhetoric and diversity are really not the problem. It's lack of moderation. So I think it's known to Marvel that fans generally don't like this agenda. And I think they tried to kind of relaunch their universe again, not too long ago, uh, because I saw this promotional poster with Spider-Man in the middle, which I found very surprising because uh, over the last few years, it's been Captain Marvel who's been more the face of, of Marvel Comics and the flagship character. But don't be fooled, just because this relaunch happened doesn't mean that this agenda is not still front and center for Marvel. Uh, this is even happening with Marvel Studios. I mean, if you've, or, and, and Disney as a whole, Disney, the company that owns Marvel, this is just happening throughout that whole company. And I saw that when I went to go see Star Wars The Last Jedi, uh, I was really, really kind of surprised. I liked the movie, but I was really surprised at how overt their attention to diversity was. And uh, this is even happening with Marvel Studios. If you've been following what's going on with Marvel Studios, there's been a, a lot of controversy around Brie Larson and uh, the release of the Captain Marvel movie. So what do you think about all this? Do you think that Marvel should just can the diversity agenda totally? Or do you think they should just maybe keep it in there but tone it down a little bit? I would love to hear your thoughts about this and anything else that we talked about in this video in the comments. So that does it for our video today. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I hope I got you thinking a little bit about this new direction that Marvel has been following over the last few years. As always, if you like this video, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.